Welcome to another exciting edition of American Warrior Radio, the place to be for news, notes, interviews, and current events for all issues military and veteran related. If you or someone you know has ever worn the uniform of the U.S. Coast Guard, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, or National Guard of Reserves, you've come to the right place, American Warrior Radio, right here on the Talk To Me station, AM 1060 WMEL, and online worldwide at 1060WMEL.com, sponsored by AVET Project. Folks, you know this program is all about supporting our troops and their families, both past and present. So please, get comfortable, grab a nice beverage, and a pencil and paper to jot down a note or two, because we're always efforting to bring you important information that you can use and share with others. With that said, let's roll down the runway and get this show off the ground. You all know me, I'm Garen Cohn. I'm an Air Force veteran, a retired legal advocate for veterans, and founder of AVET Project. But all you regular listeners to American Warrior Radio also know that I never fly through the airwaves alone. Good morning, I'm Glenn McGuffey. I'm retired Air Force, and I'm the retired manager of the Brevard County Veteran Services Team, where it was my honor to help our veterans and eligible family members and survivors obtain the benefits earned through our veteran service to our great nation for 22 plus years and I've been volunteering a little over two since then so uh, <laughs> I just think don't I'm, know when to quit <laughs> this business is so complicated that I think I'm gonna learn it one day but brings up a point you should always seek out the services of an accredited veteran service officer to help you with your claim and don't do it yourself. I guarantee you're, you've got a 99% chance of messing it up if you do it yourself. And Glenn, for all our listeners out there, even those of you that are listening out of state or maybe even out of the nation, how can they get in touch with you? They can get in touch with me at Glenn, G-L-E-N-N, at AVET Project, A-V-E-T-P-R-O-J-E-C-T dot org. So that's Glenn at avetproject.org. And folks, we are here in the month of November. It's hard to believe we're almost through another year. But I just got to tell you, we've got a huge show today, and we're going to launch right into it because uh, here on the Space Coast, we are privileged as Avet Project and American Warrior Radio to have a member of the IAP Worldwide Services family on the line with us right now, Henry Mata who is going to talk to us about a 5K community walk and run. Henry, on the line. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. And I know we wanted to have you on to speak just briefly about the 5K. But before we do that, very quickly, give us a little synopsis about yourself. I know you're high up in the IAP world, but what did you do before? Have you ever, worked, have you ever been in the service? Uh, I'm a six years uh, Army veteran. Actually, I got out of the service in 19. Uh, I went into the service in 1993. Got out in 1999. I pursued a career at here yeah, at the Space Coast with the Space Shuttle program. I worked there for 12 years. I uh, did a, uh, after the Space Shuttle contract was over. I worked for the Army again in uh, overseas out in Germany for a two-year assignment. And for the past three years, I've been working for IAP in the HR group. Uh, and actually, IAP is a government contracting company, so by services to the government, uh, to all, all the military services, Army, Marines, uh, Air Force, uh, Coast Guard, and uh, even other uh, uh, DOD uh, contracts. Sure, and I just want everybody out there to know that both you and your wife have long been volunteers with AVET Project, which we're all volunteers. Nobody's getting a paycheck at AVET Project, but I personally want to thank you for that because you continue to serve. And we got you on the on the radio right now because we want to talk about what's happening on the 14th. Share with us. Okay, on the 14th, we have a community uh, run walk at the uh, uh, Satellite Beach. It's actually the South Patrick Housing. And it's uh, sponsored by IAP, and we have a, a lot of major sponsors. Uh, the 5K is benefiting the ABIT project, but it's also benefiting uh, the... Uh, Brevard School Foundation and the United Way of Brevard. So those are three organizations that they have a local presence, but do, they do have a global impact on their mission. So we actually support those three causes, and we want to invite everybody uh, to participate, not only locally at the event, because even the, though the event is full, is full with uh, a lot of great things, we also open the race uh, to, for people all over the world to participate virtually. 
and uh, they will they will receive a finisher's medal and the T-shirt. They will receive a packet with uh, for um, basically participating. It doesn't matter where they are, whether they want to walk it or run it, or they want they can actually all, all uh, participate uh, by visiting iapws.com slash 5k. They will get all the information about the 5k there. Uh, a little high, a little highlight about the about. The uh, day of the event at Satellite Beach, we're going to have vendors, we're going to have live music, we're going to have uh, a kitty race that is actually free for all uh, uh, kids' participation, and they will also receive a little token of, uh, of for finishing that, that kids' race. So it's, it's going to be a good family event and a, a, a fun-filled morning that day on 14th of November. Exactly, and that's just one week from today, people. Yeah, uh, give us the details there again, please. The when, where, and what, and all that. Yeah, it's sa Saturday, uh, November fourteenth, and it is in Satellite Beach uh, at the uh, South Ho uh, Patrick Housing area. It's Poinsettia, uh, Poinsettia Drive, and uh, basically all the information is going to be at www.iapws.com/slash 5K. Excellent. Get all the information. And you mentioned the virtual. Explain that real quick. The virtual is anybody that, is, that wants to participate, they will actually have the option as on the online application to uh, sign up as a virtual runner. So they finish the, the, the race at, the, uh, at their own time, whatever they can. I mean, you could even finish it on a treadmill if you want to. <laughs> or you go on a, on a walk around your neighborhood. And then uh, basically right, uh, a few days before the race, we will mail out the... Uh, uh, the electronic bibs. We you send an email with an electronic bib, and all we need to, uh, to get from everybody is like basically a picture or something, an acknowledgement that they receive at their time what they did to, uh, on the race. And we will be mailing out the packages, the participation medals, and T-shirts. We will be mailing out the week of uh, November 16th. Sometime after after the race, we're gonna you know basically gather all the information and send everything uh, back to your home. So. It doesn't matter where you are. You could be in the state of Florida. You could be at home. You could be in the moon. And you, you could do 5K. <laughs> you could those, actually uh, participate. For all those lunar participants, yeah. So we're <laughs> talking with Henry Mata from IAP, which is Ingenuity and Purpose Worldwide Services. Glenn, you want to tell them uh, what other activities are coming up? Well, looks like uh, in those activities that uh, Henry was talking about are uh, face painting, games and local food vendors and I, I tell you what this is a family affair so it looks like a great time to, to uh, participate in it and I know a bunch of you out there are runners exactly and the medals they get for finishing the race are amazing Henry you guys did an awesome job with that oh, thank you thank you Gary and actually, actually we also have on um, door prices for the people that are going to be pressing at the event um, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have raffles uh, for all the participants in the race. So uh, and we have really good really good sponsors that provided us with uh, uh, you know certain door prices. So uh, I will encourage everybody to show up out there and uh, participate of the race, participate of the uh, of the event that day. All the events that we're gonna have around. Uh, go support the vendors. I mean, most of the vendors are either. Uh, ex-military or uh, they have something to do in the military uh, community so it's uh, it, it's going to be a, 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 a great event that, that morning awesome well henry thank you so much for spending a few minutes with us on this fine saturday again it's one week from today give them that website so they can register whether it's here to run the race locally or virtually how can they do it uh, visiting www.iapws.com slash 5k Awesome. Thank you so much, Henry. It's going to be a blast, and we'll see you there a week from today. All right. Thank you, guys. You bet. And, folks, we have more announcements, but that's one that you just got to show up for. Like you said, it's a community. It's a family affair. Sounds like a lot of fun. And we've got some other announcements we have to make because AVET Project, while we are all unpaid volunteers making it happen for our past and present military members and their families, we need financial support in order to do it. Our GNA, General Administrative Costs, is probably one of the lowest in the nation. Like, of the very few dollars that do come in, Glenn, two pennies go towards filling the box truck up with gas or paying the storage rent. Yeah. 
they're phenomenal. I mean, there's a lot of those places out there that the the uh, managers, so to speak, get paid big bucks off of the donations before anything goes to support veterans. This is the one that supports our veterans at almost to 100 percent. Exactly. Can't get much closer. We do have to do some things, those general administrative costs, but we need support. And thankfully, we've got some, and I've got a couple mentions here. Bloomers Floral Design. They've got a new location here on the Space Coast, 7720 North Wickham Suite 104 in Sun Tree. And also they've, the existing location that they've had for quite some time, Georgia Street in Palm Bay. Well, I can't tell you everything. It's up there on the web. Go to avetproject.org. Click on the Facebook icon as well. All the information is there. And Karen at Bloomers is just phenomenal. Uh, Glenn, I know that they've got a special on the carnations. What have they got going on there? Yeah, what a deal. Special carnations, uh, bud vase to honor your favorite veteran. I'm looking at a picture of it, and it's absolutely beautiful. And it's a whole whopping $11.11. .11. I love that Veterans Day. So I have to let you know that on Veterans Day, Okay, they're going to be open and they want you to come in. If you wear something representing your branch of service, you are going to be entered into a huge giveaway, about $120 stuff. 11% of all the purchases are going to benefit AVET Project. So you go to Bloomers Floral Design. You're going to buy flowers anyway. Why not do it with somebody that supports the troops through AVET Project? Absolutely. That's wonderful. And I'll give you the phone number real quick. 321-638-4000. Easy to remember. 638-4000 is their location at Suntree. So please support Bloomers because they're supporting us. And Glenn, we need to get in John's Fine Jewelry because they selected AVET Project for the month of November to be a beneficiary of their ongoing charitable donation program. Everybody that stops in there to buy a watch battery, the proceeds are going to come to AVET Project. How can they get a hold of them? Yep, you can get a hold of them. Well, they're at 215 Brevard Avenue in Cocoa Village. And... Uh, you can reach them on the phone, 321-631-0270, and they're open uh, Tuesday through Saturday from 9.30 to 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And they do take a couple days off. <laughs> yeah, they take off Sunday and Monday. Cool. <laughs> go check out John's Jewelry, and while you're at it, go to Bloomers and get your flowers on Veterans Day, uh, the 7th through the 14th. So today through the 14th at Bloomers, all month long at John's Fine Jewelry there in Cocoa Village. Help them help us help our troops, okay? Help, help, help. Absolutely, and I, uh, I'm going to have to come visit them. I just found two nice watches uh, uh, cleaning up my bureau, and uh, they don't run, so i got to get some batteries. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to get this next mention out. We've got to get to our bosun's call because I'm so excited to have a new commander of the Coast Guard Station Port Canaveral joining us today in studio. But uh, on November 9th, it's the Firearms Fun Night at Frog Bones. Okay, you can't miss it. Caltech's deeply involved in helping us do this. I'll have some more information about this during the second segment, but we can't delay it any longer. Vince, let's fire up that bosun call. Well, we, like I said, are very happy and pleased to have and be honored to have in studio the new commander of the Coast Guard Station Port Canaveral, Chief Latimeric. How you doing, sir? I'm doing very good, Garen. Thank you, and I appreciate you having me here. This is, uh, this is a great experience. Well, we're glad that you made it in, and this is your initial or inaugural bosun call. Your predecessors have been joining us for years now, Glenn. Absolutely, and uh, I was telling David uh, before we got going that uh, always uh, find out something new about what the Coast Guard does and what their mission is that I bet many, many of our listeners never knew. Yeah. And I'm honored to carry on this course from uh, from B. Perry. <laughs> Great. Well, uh, and we're glad to, glad to have you. Give our audience a little background about yourself. You've been in the Coast Guard a while. Tell us what's going on. Yeah, I've been in uh, for, well, actually, believe it or not, it's coming up on 25 years, and it's amazing wow. on how fast the time flies, because uh, I remember when I joined in January of 91, I was a little apprehensive, didn't know much about the Coast Guard for, uh, from where I lived up in New Jersey, and uh, joined for two years, and uh, the consistent thing was I loved the mission, and uh, I loved the people that I worked with, and I found that to carry out throughout the uh, 25 years that I've, uh, that I've been in. Um, my sister was actually the person that got me to uh, join. My sister is a uh, 
customs agent. She uh, retired about three years ago, uh, you know, when they transferred over and now uh, it was ICE and then I think uh, uh, her last few years there was uh, Department of Homeland Security, uh, just called DHS. Um, so she worked a lot with the Coast Guard up in New York um, when they had it back on Governor's Island. Um, you know, they, they don't have it there any longer, but uh, she was the one that, you know, where I was kind of comprehending if I should go into the military, I was considering also law enforcement as well. And uh, she said, well, you know, I, I work a lot with the Coast Guard in, uh, in Governor's Island, and maybe that might be something that you're interested in. And I, and, and I did not know a lot about the missions that the Coast Guard did. And I found that throughout my time in, when I talk about it, I find that that seems to be the consistency with a lot of people, not knowing a lot about the Coast Guard. And once I started finding out about all the missions that they did, and that every few years when you transfer, you can try another one of those missions if you want to, that, that just seemed to be uh, the, the perfect mix for me and uh, something that kept me in for these 25 years. I guess so. You, you found a home. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I found a home. And uh, I'm going to be leaving kicking and screaming when I become mandatory retirement. <laughs> <laughs> well, wow. You look like you're uh, about 21 to me. But <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, bud. I appreciate it. <laughs> what, what would you think has been your most interesting command or deployment or patrol, whichever sticks out? Well, I would say my most interesting um, assignment was probably, um, I spent a lot of time down in Miami. And, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, I have always said is if, if, if I want to be assigned somewhere, I want to be assigned someplace where they're very busy. And, and there's no shortage of uh, Coast Guard you know, work down in Miami. I mean, they, they don't shut down, you know, uh, seasonally like some pl other places up north. So um, during the time that I was in, in the early 90s, there were, uh, and, and still, it still holds true, there was a lot of uh, missions going on with counter-narcotics and, and migrants and um, micro migrant interdiction. And one, uh, the Coast Guard had this old mission where they bought these go-fast boats and to try to do counter-narcotic missions. And it kind of, um, after a period of time, it, it fell through. And that was kind of during the area of the cocaine cowboys, I would say, in like the mid to late 80s. And it, it kind of stopped, I would say, in the early 90s. Well, in 97, the Coast Guard decided to uh, try another version of that. And um, they purchased these 42-foot uh, fountain lightning boats that, um, you know, uh, Reggie Fountain's a famous, you know, uh, boat racer and, and they decided to try to get those to use as a counter narcotic mission. And um, so at the time I was stationed at the Coast Guard station in Miami Beach and this mission was getting put on through uh, D7 Tacklet and they do uh, mostly just tactical law enforcement missions and they called me up and said hey would you be interested and we're going to do 90 day deployments uh, off of Haiti and then we're going to do deployments uh, in the Bahamas to try to do counter narcotic missions. So I said, well, let me go call my, talk to my wife first. <laughs> <laughs> the boss. I, I got to get approval before I can do all that. And she said, because it was going to be 90 days and it was volunteer, she said, if that's what you want to do, um, I support you 100%. And uh, I said, okay, sign me up. So um, the, the fun part initially is we actually got the training through Reggie Fountain, the, the boat racer. We went up to St. Augustine. We had the boats, and we were running them around there. And then we were doing uh, deployments, like I said, uh, down off of uh, Jockmel, Haiti, and we were getting intercepting boats that was coming up from uh, Colombia or different areas throughout the Caribbean, and uh, you know doing a lot involved with airdrops as well. Uh, we were doing patrols. Um, we we're staying in Quesal Bank for a while. We we're staying in uh, Cat K in the Bahamas, you know, because there were still airdrops that was going on, you know, during that time. And uh, we were doing a lot with that, and um, very, very exciting mission. Very dynamic, um, very fast dynamic. moving. But you know, uh, honestly, I, I'd say one of the most nerve-wracking parts of it was that there, you know, with all the reefs and everything. I mean, we were driving these boats doing about 50 knots through it, and you know, the bad guys are knowing a little bit more familiar with the area there than what we were. But it, it was an exciting mission. And I, and uh, just for a visual for us, uh, sounds to me like you're describing something similar to a cigar. You know, the boat is 42 foot long and it was only about seven, eight feet wide, you wow. know, and, it, and it, had, um, it had twin 502 Mercury's on it, it had a little over a thousand horsepower, wow. so it, it would do about 65 knots. <laughs> no wonder you that's, had fun. Yeah. yeah, folks, that's more than 65 miles an hour. And I was getting a paycheck for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Well, folks, this is Commander Latimer's inaugural bosun call here on American Warrior Radio. He is your commander of Station Port Canaveral 
and we're just so glad you're here. Give us an idea, because we've got a few minutes left here, of what's going on right now out at uh, the station. Well, um, still doing a lot with the, the same missions. Um, you know, rocket launches are, are ramping up, sub submarine escorts. Um, you know, during the, per the first uh, four months that I was here, uh, we were involved in the case with the two uh, missing 14-year-old boys. Oh, yeah. Um, so, you know, that happened off at Jupiter Inlet, but with the Gulf Stream moving, that was moving a pretty steady four knots where that search area was. So all of the Coast Guard stations pretty much throughout the East Coast was involved. And we spent about two days uh, searching, and then uh, even after it cleared our search area, we were, uh, we were doing shoreline searches to see if anything might come up that might help with the case. But I, I tell you, the amount of phone calls that we got from the community just to try to see any bit of information that they can pass to us, you know, to try to help us out, which is phenomenal. Um, you know, and uh, our, our crews were, were, were spending, we were exceeding our limits. I mean, our boat is, is typically meant to go about 50 miles offshore, and we were searching close to about 70 miles offshore. Today. Wow. So... Um, it's it's an unfortunate ending. I mean, obviously you called off the, and that was the Coast Guard that made that call regarding the search and rescue. It, it was, you know, and you know, as the hierarchy goes, uh, I mean, we've exhausted uh, every possible way that or means that we could to to try to find them, and. Uh, we had our boats obviously out there, but there was also patrol boats, uh, medium endurance cutters, uh, aircraft, and it was just completely saturated with resources to try to do it. And, it, and it's a tough call, and it, it went all the way up to the Admiral to try to uh, see, to make sure that it, we looked at every possible opportunity that we could you know, before that decision was made. Exactly, and we want to thank Beachside Helicopters and Gary Varley also, and even Scott, one of our lead volunteers, and Kim went up there to assist in that effort flying the helo over. Uh, we've got like a minute left. Is there anything, well, first of all, how can people find out more about the Coast Guard? Well, you know, I think there's, website is probably the best resource. Um, USCG.mil, gocoastguard.com. Uh, one of the things that I like about USCG.mil is they have a Coast Guard Historians webpage. And I always like to check it because you can go on there and they'll have calendars that'll say a significant event that happened at any given day in the Coast Guard. And it's something that, you know, you can pass on to, that we pass on to the crew or that, you know, can get passed on and, and, and it's very interesting. And it can tell you all the different missions, all the different specialties that you need to, to uh, or that you can, you know, sign up for. So a lot of great resources out there. Awesome. Again, this is the inaugural bosun call for your commander, Post Coast Guard Station, Port Canaveral. And we're going to have you back on a regular basis with the bosun call. Thank you, sir, for joining us today. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. And folks, don't go anywhere because American Warrior Radio is going to be right back with Heal the Warrior, Heal the Country with Dr. Scott Fairchild. Listen, I'm serious. Refresh your beverage. Come right back. We'll see you in a moment. All right. <laughs> Can we laugh? Can we laugh? Can we laugh? Can we laugh? Can we laugh?